I mean, strength there because of your good deeds and I've heard about what uh, the organization is doing. Uh, but, but on the issue of uh, tolerance, I said, the difference of culture, of language, is not for you to despise, but to appreciate. I mean, I, am, I, I don't know Urdu or Hindi except for Muhabbat Zindagi, Jack uh, PR, uh, 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 okay. but you that's show... That's good enough. <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> but uh, you show a lot of appreciation. I mean, the culture, the differences, the, the style, yes. But if you find that there are certain things distasteful, for example, uh, not everything you can uh, appreciate, then you tolerate. And you're absolutely right. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, brother. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Faraz Salat, and I'm an Indian student. While going in reminisce about the teaching given by my Christian teacher, she taught me then that there is an almighty who has been sitting and reclining in a room and that room has 10,000 ways. Mr. X, Mr. Y and Mr. Z select different room, different route and what happens between them is dispute, controversy and they all start fighting with each other. I asked her why does this happen? She told me superiority. Each of them wants to rule the other. Each of them wants to be powerful. Each of them wants to be superior among them. Then I realized that it's our superiority. We want to conquer everything. My religion is not confined in a piece of architecture. Indeed, in fact, it is confined in my heart. Why should I protect my religion by using armory and weapons? I just need my consign, I need my heart, I need my blood and nerves to protect my religion. If they are demolishing a piece of architecture today, if my religion is protected in my heart, I'll bring 10,000 more architecture into existence. Thank you. Thank you. What was your question, brother? Yeah, yeah, all right. I mean, you were talking clear? about the initial uh, yeah. message or well, from your teacher about these hundred other ways and rooms, whatever. But you have now... After learning, my dear son, you should go uh, and transcend above the understanding of your teacher and, and, and move on. You are right uh, that uh, we don't use uh, force and the might of power to compel people to understand. That is why in Islam, there is no compulsion in the religion, but the, the, the continuous message. I think uh, with, uh, with Dr. Zakir Naik, we were looking at the posters today and, and he remarked very, very relevant point. So, la ikra hafiddin, yes, everybody knows that, no compulsion religion. And then it continues, because truth, falsehood, and error is very clear. You have to understand that. Uh, so, move on, my dears. I mean, yes, I mean, um, it's not all religions are not the same. They are different. That is why we, we, we believe that we are right. But it's not a feeling of arrogance and superiority. We argue in a good manner. Bil uh, Ahsan. I mean, in in wajadilum billati Ahsan. Even you argue, you argue using uh, polite words and argument with reasons. And I think we have to move on. You are right. Just uh, move on. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Alia Khan, and I'm a student of psychology, brother. The Islamic Sharia for politics can be blessed, implemented in which form of government today? Sharia of politics. Well, um, it depends what we mean by Sharia. I mean, um, the various uh, interpretation. That's why I confine myself to what is the higher objectives of the Sharia. What is the maqasid of Sharia? is salvation of men and women, is a faith, is freedom of conscience to, to accept the religion, freedom, expression, dignity, honor of men and women, sanctity of life and property. That is basic. Otherwise, you can have a Muslim government, no gender equality. 
you can have a, a, a non-Muslim government that respects freedom and rule of law. So that is why you, it is better to spell out what we mean by the Sharia notion. I don't believe that we should use too many of these terms and confuse too many people. That is why, say in the Malaysian context, I, I, I call for people to understand and agree on basic tenets. What do you want? Freedom of conscience. What do you mean by freedom of conscience? A vibrant economic policy. What do you mean by a vibrant economic policy? Do you accept injustices and corruption? Do you accept riba as a way of life? Or do you give an option, an alternative for Muslims to decide for themselves? You have a family, Muslim family law to at least be a basis for you to then uh, conduct your family affairs. You have the Sharia courts at least for the Muslims to be adjudicated. But then you have a problem if you want to compel the rest or the others or the non-Muslims to be subjected by that. So I think uh, what is important now is to move on and, and ensure that we are free as Muslims to exercise our faith, our values, at the same time to ensure that you can be part of this community of nations. Uh, may I request that if you have any non-Muslim brothers and sisters in the audience, feel free to come on the mic. You would be given first preference to put forward your question. Brother Anwar Ibrahim is not merely a leader who satisfies the requirements of Muslims at large, but as is Islam, looking at issues for the entire humanity, including Muslims and non-Muslims, from not only an Islamic perspective, understanding the international perspective of various communities and societies worldwide. Feel free to come up. Our volunteers would give you a preference to come up. We would appreciate that and thank you for doing